Good morning, guys. So I'm about to get ready. So it is currently 8.30 and I'm just gonna do a little bit of quick skincare. So I'm gonna use my Balancing Toning Mist by Prestige um, and then the Super Serum. I'll link these down below. And then we're gonna put on a little bit of my Vitamin C cream. So I, what? I must have put that on wrong because I don't know if you guys could see the way that that just sprayed on my face, but that was not correct. Um, I am going to be shooting some content today for a shoe store. So we're going to head over there. So I was thinking, I was like, oh, I think I want to film two like get ready with me style reels today, like this morning before I left, but I just really don't feel like it. <laughs> So I have the outfits picked out and I'll just film them another day, but I'm going to put on a little bit more makeup than usual because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the one that is mostly on camera in this. Um, cause Taylor's pretty good at filming. We're just using an iPhone. So it's nothing like high production wise. Um, and you know, I am the on camera girly, so I don't really mind being on camera. I'm just doing some concealer now. So I am putting on more makeup than I normally would. I mean, you guys see me every single day. I literally just do like mascara and uh, my eyebrows. But since I'm probably gonna be on camera, I was like, might as well add a little bit more. So this week is interesting. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to do my job because I'm just not in the office like at all this week. Um, I'm off Friday though, at least like not in the office. So maybe I'll do like a little bit of work then because that's when my vacation starts. Cause I was originally saving that to be a travel day just in case. So maybe I'll do that because Wednesday we're doing a half day cause we're going to do our holiday party. And then Thursday, I'm going to be at Holabird. And so I still do like a little bit of other stuff when I'm at Holabird, but the majority of my time is obviously for that client because I'm in their office. So I think maybe Wednesday is the day where I'm really going to just like try and knock everything out and focus and get stuff scheduled out so that we are good to go. And before this, I was an assistant manager at J. Crew Factory. And then before that, I was just doing social media management, like freelancing. I was basically just doing it all by my lonesome. Um, and then you guys know I worked through the branding agency in Atlanta, which is called the Atlanta branding agency. There's a lot to speak on with that, but I've decided to just say nothing. Um, I don't know if I've ever really told you guys what happened with that, but basically they weren't paying me. Like I was just not being paid on time. I went three months without being paid. I was waiting for over $600 at one point when I was working with them. And ultimately I stopped working with them in April of this year because they just were not paying me. Um, it was a completely remote job and I was basically just, I really was just freelance. I wouldn't even say I was contracted. Um, and we had stuff in writing and everything, but they just like, I mean, we breached the contract a long time ago when they didn't pay me on time. So, that was so stressful and I was like, I cannot deal with this anymore. So I quit and then when it came around to like June, July, they reached out to me because one of their clients loves my work so much that she wanted me <laughs> to come back. And so now I was working at J. Crew. And so, you know, I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm more than happy to help out. Just so you guys know, like I have a full-time job now. 
so you can't like call me in the middle of the day. Um, well, I wasn't full time, but like the retail hours were like kind of crazy. So I was very much like, I don't have that same availability and it's going to be different every week. So if you need to schedule a call with me, like, let's do that. But I'm not going to be able to just randomly answer the phone like I was able to before. So I think one of the biggest things I learned from working with them is to create, 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 is to create like very strong boundaries, especially when you're working for yourself, because people will treat you how you allow them to treat you. And when you're working for yourself, like you might not even realize how important those boundaries are because you're like, oh, well, it's like relax. I don't have a boss. Like I can do whatever. So like, this is fine. But if you set the standard that they can call you, text you at any hour of the day and they're going to get an immediate response, then, you know, that is the standard that you set and you almost can't really get upset if they're contacting you at those times and expecting a response because you kind of set yourself up for failure. It's freezing outside, but this is the outfit. So jeans, bodysuit, like I said, little scarf. And then this coat is from the thrift store. And then I'm wearing my mini Uggs. So the gas here is $2.99, but you guys know I use upside. So I'm actually going to get the gas for $2.88. Oh guys, we are moving up in the world. I've never been so excited to spend money in my life. I always get her seat just in case. Of course it's good. That's okay. But I would normally get her a seat just in case for some reason. Because sometimes the check-in doesn't work if you're going to a check-in gas station. But um, it looks like now they say that I don't even have to check in anymore. I just have to use my card. So I take that back. It doesn't seem like it'll be a problem. This is why... I'm always late because I feel like I'm like, okay, perfect. We're on time. And then I'm like, oh, I have three miles in my tank or, oh, we're like good to go. And then they're like, actually, you're not going here. You're going there. And I'm like, I just want the universe to let me live my life. So we are almost there. I've never been on this side of Baltimore before. We're basically in West Baltimore. Um, and you, you know, what's funny. So like in one of my last vlogs, I talked about how Atlanta really changed my perspectives and stuff. Um, and I talked about how it really changed my perspective on Baltimore, but I didn't really go into it because I was really focusing more on my experience that I had in Atlanta, but it really just changed the way that I look at cities because... I never lived in a city before and I don't think it really matters what city you live in but I think it helped even more living in a city that is so predominantly black because especially a place like Atlanta um, every like horrible stereotype that people have about black people I feel like Atlanta is the one place where all of those are completely broken because it shows like a full mixture of just people in general like race aside so if you have any prejudices like I feel like you meet everybody on the spectrum of you know whatever stereotype people have in their minds when they think of um, black people and it was just so interesting because it's like there's just so many black people which like I think everyone knows but it was like such a culture shock for me and I feel like it really changed the way that I looked at Baltimore and thought of Baltimore because I think a lot of people think of Baltimore and they they think of black people they're like oh yeah there's like so many black people in Baltimore 
and they do, but they're in like the outer portions of Baltimore where a lot of people don't go because they're really just neighborhoods. It's like this city is built up around the water and then everything else, they were like, good luck guys. And so it's like, you really have no reason to be out there unless you're going to like Edgar Allan Poe's grave or like any historic sites because those are like a little bit deeper into the parts where you know you're probably not going out to eat or going out to bars at night and stuff like that and so I just think it's so interesting now because I think back to like the way that I thought of Baltimore and some of the stuff that I would say and I'm just like girly None of that is true. Like, who told you this? Yeah, I feel like I've changed my perspective a lot. I still don't like the city. I'm not a huge fan. I just think it's really unfortunate. It's just such a corrupt city. Like, you can't get anyone to actually want to help out. Like, the amount of black people that we have had in charge, and they still just aren't helping the people that need help, and instead they're, like, creating Harbor East and they're now doing this new part that is near that thrift store that I go to Brooklyn Park there's like a subsection like a little bit higher I can't remember what the area is called but it's kind of close to the water below fed and they're like trying to build that up and make it some like fancy schmancy area and it's like no one is asking for this. Like literally no one asked for this. And I think the thing that Baltimore gets so confused about is that people live in row homes. You don't live in apartments. Like the only people that are renting out apartments are people that are new here and move here. Every single person that I've ever met who lives in Baltimore that started an apartment ended up in a row home. And the only reason they started in that apartment was because they didn't know the area. They didn't know like what people do, where people live. And when you move places, you think, well, let me look at apartments. But in Baltimore, like you don't live in apartments, you live in houses. Like that's really what you do. And it's like, the rent is so cheap. I don't know. It's just such an interesting place. And obviously I live in the suburbs. I don't live in the city. Like I said, I don't like the city. So I, I wouldn't live in Baltimore ever. I just feel like the culture has been diminished so much over the years and I think it's so sad. And the real reason why I left Atlanta was really because I felt like the same thing was about to happen. Cause I think it's like a cycle in cities that are of a higher black population where like they cycle through this gentrification that is just so damaging to every single community there. Even if you're not from Atlanta, like that place really did feel like my home and it still feels like my home. And I will never, okay, I'm almost there. Huh, speaking of that, we're gonna turn on to Moreland Ave. That was one of the streets that I lived by in Atlanta. But yeah, like, I don't know. It's sad to see it happen in real time. And I lived in Grant Park and I lived in Old Fourth, but I lived on the sides that were closer to downtown because they were cheaper um and they were the parts where it was like they were never gonna be able to gentrify that area like the lofts that i lived in i can't remember what they're called anymore that's so bad when i was leaving they were trying to build either townhouses or apartments that's all it is in atlanta it's either townhouses or apartments they said you want to buy something we can't help out with that but you can rent for the rest of your life um but yeah i don't know and i'm glad you know summer hill i hope they continue to do their thing forever so they can stop raising the prices of the grant park area because that neighborhood is so fun and it's so mixed I don't know. Like, I wanted to buy a house there, but then I was like, uh, I don't want to stay in Atlanta. <laughs> so that didn't last very long. Okay, I see them all. We've got a tripod, and then I brought like a mini one too from the office. But we're gonna try and use. Here it is. 
Baby, you don't know what you do to me Between me and you, I feel like chemistry I won't let no one come and take your place Cause the love you give, you can't be replaced So no one else knows what you do That's why I'm not in my life with you I feel like this is actually too small That's what they looked very small Seven and three eighths, seven and a half. See, this one is tiny. That one's really small. Our filming is going well. We're doing our last little video for an ad. Um, kind of like a get ready with me style, so we're almost done. So we are all done. I'm about to head to go and get some food. In between getting Chick-fil-A and tacos. I don't have a lot of time, so probably tacos because we all know how Chick-fil-A is. Um, definitely would not describe them as fast. This area, with this mall, is uh, interesting, I will say. I'm not gonna say anything else on the matter. When I was in the store, filming, working, this man came up to me and was talking about my teeth, um, which was giving serial killer, but then he moved on and then was talking about my throat and then started talking about how he wanted to have sex with me. I was like, this is literally so awkward. I've never had someone be so forward. I was like, this is, I'm disgusted. <laughs> and I just stood there and just like kind of looked at him. I was just like, <laughs> I just didn't say anything. But the work was really nice and that's all that matters. And it, I mean, the situation didn't really affect me. I was just like very confused, to be honest. Um, I get DMs from men every single day. So I am not phased by the things that people say. <laughs> But I, I would never shop at that mall. That's for sure. Would definitely feel like I would just have people coming and harassing me the whole time. Which is exactly how I felt when I would go to Lenox. The parking lot is completely full. Um, not a single spot. I've never seen it like this before. They do have a lot of construction going on, and so obviously when there's construction, there's people, yes, there's, um, there's more people here. This is mine, baby. Funnily enough, there's like tons of people leaving right now. But we're gonna get some tacos at Felipe's. No, 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 dude! I literally was waiting for that parking spot. That has to be a joke. I literally wanna say something, but I feel like it's just not necessary. Oh my God! I'm not even gonna say what I wanna say. That took forever. It is now almost 1.30. So I'm gonna try and eat <laughs> at least one and a half of a taco as fast as I can. I might actually bring the food in because sometimes we have to wait a little bit for the meeting and just see if I can finish it. But there they are. So I got it with the guacamole sauce. I used to never get it, but then they accidentally put it on last time. It's actually really good. It's just like guacamole and like seasoning or something. It's not that I want you here So 
I was gonna go to the gym, but I've just decided we're just gonna low-key take an L for the week because I don't think I'm gonna go tomorrow because it's our holiday party. And then I'm planning to go on Thursday. Um, and then I think they're open on Friday. I'm trying to remember when Christmas actually is, but that's my plan because um, it is 4.30 and I know the traffic is just gonna be really bad and I just wanna go home. So if I feel like it, maybe we will do a little at-home workout. Otherwise, I'm gonna go home and edit. I wanna try and get ahead so that I can have my video for Wednesday and Thursday ready because Wednesday night I'm probably not gonna be filming. Not filming, I'm probably not gonna be editing and I don't wanna miss a day. Well, we shall see.